How's everyone doing? Today I have a Dollar Tree Blu-ray haul with 12 pickups. And if you've seen any of these, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave me those comments down below and let me know if you've picked up any Blu-rays at your Dollar Tree and what your best find was movie-wise from the Dollar Tree. I've heard that there are Criterions. I've heard that there are 4Ks. I've never seen those myself, uh, but I'm hoping to one day. Uh, usually my two local Dollar Trees have nothing. They'll have like uh, the World Series ones or one of the, you know, IMAX uh, and Space ones or some kids movies and mostly DVDs. Uh, but this one, uh, this Dollar Tree was about like an hour away from me. So this one actually had something. The ones near me never have anything. Um, so my opportunities to usually get some of the Blu-rays are usually nil. Uh, but definitely exciting to find a Dollar Tree that actually has Blu-rays and a good selection too. There was a, a bunch of ones in there that I already had, um, but there are, I got um, two of these in here for trade bait. So <laughs> uh, I've, I know somebody had mentioned uh, one of the movies uh, they were looking for. And so, uh, you know, if it's an opportunity to get something for that to make a trade, I'm cool with that too. And then also I feel like there's movies that are, you know, blind buys. I try to do too many blind buys anymore, uh, especially like new releases, but for a dollar, it is, you know, it's actually a dollar twenty-five now. Dollar Tree is no longer a dollar tree, it's a dollar twenty-five. They raise the prices, inflation. Um, but still worth it. It's very minimal risk, possible high reward. I found some uh hidden gems. There's some great ones. I'm gonna do a top ten uh movies at the Dollar Tree, uh, at least the ones that I found. I've seen people post uh, other videos, but I've never found them myself. But like 99 Homes, that one is amazing. Uh, I Live by Night is another one that I really love. Those are ones that I found at the Dollar Tree. There's a bunch of other ones too. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into these ones. First up is Rampage, and this is a video game adapted movie. Uh, they had a lot to work with, essentially. They were actually little to work with and a lot to you know, make up on their own because the video game, there really wasn't too much plot from what I can remember. It's just you know, giant gorilla smashing buildings and stuff, kind of like a King Kong ripoff. Uh, but this one, there's uh, different animals and they get some kind of like pathogen and they become mutated and super aggressive. And uh, the rock has a bond with uh, the one big uh, gorilla right there. And this is directed by Brad Payton, who's directed three movies now with The Rock. Uh, Journey to Mysterious Island, which wasn't great, kind of, you know, a take on Mysterious Island. And uh, I think it actually wasn't a double pack with uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth remake uh, as well with Brendan Fraser. Uh, but then he also did San Andreas, the giant disaster movie with uh, The Rock. Uh, this one also has Naomi Harris. And I actually rewatched uh, Miami Vice recently, the Michael Mann movie with uh, Colin Farrell and uh, Jamie Foxx, and Naomi Harris was in that one too, but she was 28 Days Later. I think she's a really talented actress, um, so it was good to see her in this one too. But this is just, you know, action overload explosions. I remember seeing this and enjoying it, and now I have it for the collection. So I'm definitely happy with that one. Next up is Crazy Rich Asians, which I know they're working on a sequel for this one. And I thought this one was actually decently fun. Uh, Aquafina, I usually like her, but I thought she was terrible in this one. <laughs> I couldn't stand her character. I remember she used to do like uh, YouTube comedic raps and stuff. And uh, I, I kind of loved her when she did that. And now she's doing a lot of voice acting. She was in Bad Guys, the animated movie, which I actually thought was a lot of fun. And her voice was instantly recognizable. Uh, but she's been in a bunch of other movies too. Um, but yeah, this one to me surprised me. Uh, it was uh, something I wasn't familiar with. It's basically kind of like a fish out of water story for this girl who uh, meets her longtime uh, boyfriend's family. She goes to Singapore and the, the family's like mega rich. And uh, just to see all these actors involved too. I like Constance Wu a lot. Um, although I was disappointed with the, the drama with her TV show, uh, Fresh Off the Boat. I love that show. And apparently she was disappointed. She wrote on uh, Twitter that she was a uh, she didn't want to do the show anymore essentially when it got renewed she was uh, disappointed about it and basically that affected the whole cast and I, I think it would only last like another season but that show was so much fun and she owed a big part of her career to that show but it, you know the rest of those people they may not be working right now because of that the backlash but uh ken jung's in here um jimma chan uh again a, a bunch of other recognizable people and it's just a, a fun ride here and it's based off the uh, best-selling novel uh I'm not a big rom-com fan, but this one I thought was uh, really enjoyable. And then Henry Good, uh, Golding's in here too, uh, who I feel like I've seen him everything recently. He's just all over the place. 
Uh, let me know what your favorite rom-com is. Let me know what your favorite movie with The Rock is. You know one that I think is really underrated action-wise? Faster. I love that one. Nobody ever talks about that one. But uh, Crazy Rich Asians, and I'm looking forward to the sequel on this one. So uh, happy to pick that one up. Next up is Dollface, which I've never heard of this one. Um, you know, <laughs> I like the Puppet Master movie, so that's what it kind of reminds me of. It feels like it's going to be kind of like a ripoff of that. Uh, so, you know, some puppets and stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be some cheesy horror for sure. Uh, it's from Echo Bridge, which I feel like they didn't make movies for a long time. And then suddenly they started making movies again. This is a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. And then some of these movies, I'm not sure if these ones have them or not, but sometimes they have digital copies. And so you can sell the digital copies for more than what you paid. Like, I remember getting Dollar Tree movies before with digital copies and selling the digital codes, even though they were older, for like two bucks a piece. And essentially, you know, doubling or, you know, getting the movie for free and making a buck off of it. Uh, and sometimes even if they're expired, they could still uh, work. Uh, but yeah, Dollface, I've never heard of this one. And, uh, you know, again, makes me think of Puppet Master and all those doll movies, uh, which I dig those ones. So uh, hopefully it will be cheesy fun. And uh, I'll let you know once I've watched that one. I was I feel like it's rare to find a movie that I've never seen or never heard of before. So there's actually uh, two other movies in here that I've never uh, seen or heard of before either. But um, Hammer of the Gods. And um, this one right here is directed by um, uh, Farron Blackburn, who directed uh, a bunch of different TV shows, some Marvel TV shows, a couple episodes there. But he directed a BBC TV show, or uh, half the uh, season, uh, which was only one season. It's called The Fades with uh, Daniel Kaluuya before he got real big. Uh, but I love that show. It's a supernatural show. So freaking good. I never hear anybody talk about that one. Uh, but I have the, the Blu-ray for that one. I wish that would have gone for, you know, longer. And again, it was only the one season, but love that one. Uh, he's the director here. Uh, so I I feel like I've seen this movie. And I'm not actually 100% sure if I have or not. I feel like there was other movies very similar to this that came out. And uh, other ones that were released by uh, Magnet, too. Uh, there was, like, Black Death. Um, uh, there was another one where even, like, the cover is similar. Uh, but, I, you know, this looks like it's going to be just over-the-top crazy action. And I I might have seen it. I might have. If it's what I'm thinking, it was, again, tons of blood and fight action scenes and kicking butt. But uh, I feel like some of the dramatic elements fall a little bit flat. If, I, if it's what I'm thinking. But, um, yeah, it's a Viking warrior kind of movie. And I think, uh, you know, he has to save his kingdom, kind of, but lots of fights and stuff. Um, so I'm hoping <laughs> that's what I think of. Because I remember, you know, liking a lot of the action sequences and thinking of that part was awesome and badass. But some of the drama fell a little bit flat. But I feel like a lot of times you're not really watching the action movies for the drama. Um, I, but I do appreciate, you know, when uh, the plot pushes the act instead of vice versa, which is, you know, often the case. But if it's what I'm thinking of, I'm looking forward to revisiting it. <laughs> Um, next up is Voice from the Stone, which is another one that I, uh, haven't seen or heard before, but it has Amelia Clark, and I'm a fan of her, so, uh, this is Voice from the Stone, Silence is Calling, and, uh, this is apparently set in 1950s Tuscany in a castle, and she's a nurse who's hired to help a young, uh, mute heir, and I guess there's, like, a supernatural element, she believes she becomes, uh, taken by a spell. She uh, falls under a spell of a powerful otherworldly persona trapped in the, the villa's stone walls. Uh, and it's kind of, I guess, intertwining with her own uh, personality. Uh, but I like her as an actress. So this looks like it's gonna be moody and atmospheric as well, like washed out hues, you know, very bleak, reflecting, um, again, the tone of the movie. But uh, I like her. So that was really the main draw for this one. And one that I've never heard of before. And one more that I've never heard of before. <laughs> Satellite Girl and Milk Cow. <laughs> there you go. Um, it just seems crazy. Uh, I, You know, that cover, that title, um, it's just intriguing to me. I'm not very well versed in anime. Uh, give me some anime recommendations. Let me know what your favorite anime movie is. My favorite animated movie of all time is Grave of the Fireflies. Really depressing movie. I like depressing movies, but a really great animated war movie and dealing with the trauma of war and how it affects children especially, but love that one so freaking much. I love Akira as well. Um, so those are some of the ones that I'm familiar with. Uh, but this one is uh, very uh, intriguing. It looks very different than those ones. So I guess there's some uh, radio antenna that comes to Earth 
and uh, it's uh, it, it sees a sincere form of emotions, and there's some magical battle that transforms uh, into Satellite Girl, uh, and then there's I, the the synopsis is so weird. A loser 20-something and a cafe open mic meets fate and befalls all the broken-hearted lovers. He's turned into a farm animal. So that's where we're at. And then there's a, uh, they're aided by a wise and powerful Merlin, a wizard who's been turned into a roll of toilet paper. I kid you not. And that looks, there's the roll of toilet paper. So Merlin is to uh, turned into a roll of toilet paper. There it is in the front cover. I didn't notice it initially. This is wild uh, sounding. So yeah, they have to uh, they have to fight this all-consuming incinerator monster and uh, the wily pig witch and other nefarious adversaries to be together. Wow and a half. So it looks like it's going to be so ridiculous, um, but looking forward to checking it out. I like ridiculous movies, but that one, super, super wild right there. Um, Next up, we've got Duplicity, which I have seen. I want to revisit this one. To me, it was very like reminiscent of Mr. and Mrs. Smith um, with uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie with all that action overload and romance aspects, except they're not a couple here, but they had uh, you know had a relationship before, and so they're going back and forth. Uh, she was a CIA agent, and he was an MI6 agent, and they're both working for like the corporate world now, and you know, so it kind of feels like they're, they're going back and forth. They don't know if they can trust each other, and she kind of like screwed them over in the past. Um, so that is a big, uh, uh, fact right there that goes, plays into this big time. So it's, a uh, you know, a spy rom-com movie, if you will. Uh, and this is directed by, um, Tony Gilroy, who's, uh, who wrote a bunch of, uh, really good films, worked on a, wrote the screenplay for Armageddon and a bunch of like the, the Bourne movies. I know he directed Bourne Legacy and Michael Clayton, which I really, uh, really liked that one a lot. Uh, and I really liked uh, Julia Roberts and Clive Owens. I think they have good chemistry. And they're in the movie Closer Together uh, with Natalie Portman and Jude Law, which I love that movie so friggin' much, so underrated. Uh, but I'm looking forward to revisiting this one. I feel like uh, I remember it having some issues, but also liking a lot of the elements, especially the, the banter back and forth. Uh, so I'm going to revisit this one. And I remember uh, it had some good supporting cast members, I think, too, in here. Uh, so going to revisit that one for, you know, $1.25. Why the heck not? Next up is I Kill Giants. Uh, I remember not liking this one, but I remember somebody was looking for this one uh, and with the slipcover. So uh, I got to remember who that was because I picked that up for uh, trade bait right here. Um, I love the embossed slipcover. It is a nice slipcover for it. But I remember being like a fantasy world. This uh, young girl goes to a new school and she's dealing with like <clears throat> bullies and just feeling out of place. And uh, she has like this fantasy world. Uh, Zoe Saldana is, uh, I believe, a teacher in here too. And, um, yeah, I just remember it just kind of falling flat. Um, it was imaginative, uh, and you know, it just could have been better than it was. It just doesn't fully come to fruition. Uh, but, uh, I'm hoping <laughs> I can find who was interested in this one to do a trade for it. Um, next up is the Iceman, which, um, I've seen this one before too. And I remember really enjoying the heck out of it. Uh, Michael Shannon plays a hitman and he's, you know, married with a, a kid and nobody really knows about uh, that side of his life. And it's based on a true story too. Uh, Winona Ryder is in here, James Franco, Ray Liotta, Chris Evans. I want to say his character was like Mr. Freezy. Uh, but yeah, so I love the cast interactions and he was so, Michael Shannon, so freaking good in that role. I do like him um, as an actor. Uh, Take Shelter was a good one, too. He's been in a bunch. Of, I remember he was actually in a small role in Vanilla Sky, which is like one of my all-time favorite movies. That's an amazing remake. I know that gets a lot of criticism, but I love that movie so freaking much. Let me know what your favorite Michael Shannon movie is. Uh, but yeah, he was intense as the hitman here. Uh, great performance. Uh, next up is a movie that I got for Trey Bait. I hate this movie, but I feel like I'm the only one that hates this movie. The Conjuring 2, my least favorite in the Conjuring realm. Uh, directed by James Wan. Let me know what your favorite James Wan movie is. I feel like Death Sentence is super underrated, uh, and that one needs a blue release here in the U.S. Dead Silence used to be my favorite from him, and I used to think that was super underrated. I still think it's super underrated. Uh, but Malignant now, holy moly, I love that movie. That's become like 
not just one of my favorite movies of recent uh, for horror, but of all time. I love that movie. It makes me uh, think of like Basket Case and also, you know, the Giallo undertones. Uh, but I digress. Let's get back to this one. Uh, it's basically like, you know, very derivative. Same thing that we've seen before, except it's based on a UK case. And I think that really is the draw for this one. I think a lot of people, especially in the UK, love it because it's something that they're familiar with. But the case was debunked like all these ones are. Uh, but... Uh, there was certain scenes in here. This is this one had the scene where like he was you know singing Elvis or something, right? Uh, so I, I I thought that was out of place too, and I don't know. I just didn't think it was anything special. I thought uh, I did a review for this a while ago, and so I got so many uh, hate comments for and uh, dislikes for it because I didn't enjoy it. And some people just can't, you know, uh, understand. People have differing opinions, but I, I feel like I'm the only one that hated this movie. I haven't heard anybody else say they hated it. I just felt like it was just so predictable, so formulaic. Uh, so generic and just you know you go into the room with all the different crosses you know all the crosses are going to flip over you uh you see a thing where like a little toy is pushed into like the little tp thing and you know it's going to get pushed for you. it's just filled with cliches and tropes and it was it, it was just so cheap and formulaic and generic to me um and it just i i can't stand it. i got this one trade bait though because i know everybody loves this one and I, i've heard people say it's the best in the franchise put the pipe down <laughs> in my opinion the first one's me uh while nothing new conceptually is the best of its ilk uh, i would say probably the best in my opinion or if not one in the, the top two for me um uh, obviously you know exorcism possession movies you always think of the original exorcist exorcism of, is uh emily rose i think is really underrated too uh, one thing that popped into my mind as I'm talking about some of the cliches and tropes here, this has a lot of cliches and tropes for rom-coms and even, you know, espionage films. And it's a bit convoluted, uh, the plot, but I, I love their chemistry here. And, uh, you know, I, I'm picky when it comes to rom-coms. It's, you know, one of my least favorite genres, but I'm going to check that one out uh, again, revisit it. Next up is one that I remember really enjoying. Um, it's rough around the edges, but I had a fun time with it. This is one of those ones... You know, have a beer, hang out with your friends, uh, do whatever, you know, I don't smoke, but, you know, you just, I feel like that could work for this movie, too. But it's just a, you know, chill and have fun kind of movie. It's ridiculous, and you know what you're getting yourself into for a movie like this. It's another Wolf Cop. Uh, I like the first Wolf Cop movie, and uh, with Lowell Dean uh, directing here, um, I hope they make a third. Uh, Kevin Smith was in this one, too. He played the, the mayor. Uh, you know, you see a lot of, like, uh, Canadian aspects here, hockey and stuff like that and um the wolf cop is drinking a lot here and he's just you know he's back to uh there's like a brewery and they're trying to revive a local hockey team and there's different uh, ulterior motives going on and when i say there's like uh there's there's other things that happen um uh, that i think like people are getting like kidnapped or something it's been a while since i've seen it but i remember enjoying it and having fun with it and i'm really happy to find this I feel like this was an awesome find uh, for uh, the Dollar Tree, and uh, I love this character, Wolf Cop. Um, let me know what your favorite werewolf movie is of the past 10 years. I feel like if I say what's your favorite werewolf movie, it's usually going to be uh, like a couple different choices. Silver Bullet is one of my all-time favorites, but American Werewolf in London, uh, of course, and then Dog Soldiers, which I just recently got two different releases. Are you going to get the Second Sight release, or are you going to get the Scream Factory release? I'm leaning towards Second Sight, uh, but uh, I'll have to pick that up soon. I know they were both just released. But one that I'd love to see get a Blu-ray release is American Werewolf in Paris. I know that gets a lot of hate, but I love that movie. But uh, one that I think is really underrated that came out uh, within the past decade is a British werewolf movie called Howl. And I love that one so freaking much. I talk about it all the time. Anytime I miss, mention like werewolf movies. Uh, Wolf of Snow Hollow, too, is one that I think is a really unique take on the genre. Uh, and I think it's a lot of fun. But this one is great horror comedy. And I love it. Um, and I love the character, too. So super awesome. Next up is one uh, that I got that my girl wanted to see. And I watched it. And I saw the second one. I had never seen the first one, but I saw the second one. I thought the second one was fun. It was surprising. Uh, this one, to me, though, they try to play the drama elements. And I think that aspect just doesn't work well here. Not that the editing was terrible for this one. Um, so, yeah, I was really surprised. Uh, Steven uh, Soderbergh directed this. And I think he's a really talented director. I really enjoy uh, King of the Hill, Sex, Lies, Videotape. 
Uh, he did the Solaris remake, which with George Clooney, which I actually enjoyed that one. Uh, but he's directed a bunch of films that I have enjoyed. He directed Unsane, which I've heard a lot of buzz for. I haven't seen that one yet, but I do want to check that one out. Um, Traffic is one of my all-time favorites. Aaron Brockovich. So I think he's a really talented director. The movie Bubble was at uh, the Dollar Tree, too. I heard some people talking about that one, raving about that one. I watched that one. I was not into that one, too. That was about, like, a small town. Um, had a lot of, like, uh, non-actors in it, and uh, it could it, it, you could tell. Um, I could not get into that one, but... I know a lot of people love that one, so if you're a fan of that one, I think that might be uh, the DVD. Is mo I, the Blu-ray might have been there. I'm not sure, but the DVD is what I've seen mostly for a bubble in the Dollar Tree. But um, he did, um, Steven Soderbergh also did uh, Ocean's 11, 12, 13 too. Uh, so he's done a lot of movies that I'm a fan of. And then this, which, holy smokes. Uh, all right, how did this get a sequel? How did this get greenlit? Um, I can only imagine a lot of like lonely, you know, housewives or something uh, watching the guys. It's because basically, you know, about them, you know, male strippers, essentially. And uh, Channing Tatum is the, the main guy. And he takes a kid under his wing. And Matthew McConaughey is like uh, the kind of like the club owner. And he kind of uh, uh, does uh, Channing Tatum dirty a little bit. And uh, there's a bunch of other people. Uh, Kevin Nash is in here. And he's his parts are hilarious because... You know, he's not as young and limber and he's trying to do some of the dance moves. I feel like he's just half-assing it big time. Uh, but it was funny to see him kind of try. Uh, but yeah, they play up a lot of like the drama elements here and that aspect just doesn't work. Those, it falls so flat. Uh, there's romance aspects and just parts of the acting and the plot just feel cringy uh, outside of the rest of the cringe fest here. But the second one, I remember actually having a fun time with it. Gabriel Iglesias is good too. I wish they would have played him up a bit more um and uh, you know Steven Silver directed another movie that was uh, I feel like had a huge resurgence during everything going on in the world Contagion which I love that movie one of the better you know movies dealing with that kind of aspect um so that is one uh that I feel like you know if you're dealing with any kind of pandemic stuff uh you know that is one that I feel like it was really well received I think initially and then uh during that whole time uh, it got more love and deservedly so I love that one and then of course when you think of other movies dealing with you know pandemics and outbreaks and stuff like that outbreak with a bowl of monkey uh, and then uh, carriers with um, Chris Pine actually is I feel like underrated too but I feel like those are like the top three when you think of movies dealing with uh, you know infections and stuff like that especially modern wise uh, contagion outbreak and then uh, carriers again I think is underrated so uh, I feel like while I think it's in the top three <laughs> maybe not everybody's and I feel like there's also infected movies like 28 days later which are more horror realm so I'm not really including those in there and infected is uh, different than zombies so, uh, like uh, 28 days later people lump those movies in with uh, zombie movies and they're not zombie movies zombie movies are the dead coming back to life and infected movies, uh, they're infected by the rage virus, for instance, in 28 Days Later. I've had that discussion, uh, heated discussion with many people and had to prove that they're wrong. I remember somebody saying, it's on the DVD, it says it on the back. And I had to say, I got that same DVD and it doesn't say it. You're looking at a blur from somebody who had nothing to do with the movie. Uh, and Danny Boyle himself says it's not a zombie movie. So I'm going to go with the director. <laughs> and of course, they say in the movie, infected uh, by the rage virus. So... Um, I feel like those are two separate genres, just like the, again, those movies, the horror realm are different than, you know, the more scientific drama realm of infected movies. Um, so top two for sure, Outbreak and Contagion, uh, and then Carriers, give it some love, check it out. Um, I, I feel like it borders on the horror realm, but it's still more in the drama element and, uh, one that I never hear anybody talk about. I actually really enjoy that one, but, uh, I digress. <laughs> Back to this uh, steaming pile of poop right here. Um, yeah, yikes and a half for me. Um, it, I can't get over it. Um, I was expecting to be, you know, uh, just in that same realm where you could still have fun with it. Even if you're not into, you know, male strippers, uh, it could still have some entertaining comedic uh, aspects and just... Uh, you could tell that they had a fun time making it and things like that. And you can appreciate certain elements here and there's going to be some female romance aspects. So maybe I could check out them and there were, but uh, I just feel like uh, it, it just fell flat on pretty much every level. Uh, but this one to me, uh, my, this and bubble are like my least favorite ones. And I found both of them at the Dollar Tree. Uh, but there you go. Magic Mike. Let me know if you were a fan 
Uh, even my girl didn't like it. So uh, I don't, you know, I, I, I was really surprised because I heard great things about this movie. I thought it was going to be, you know, cheesy fun like the second one was. And, um, you know, the second one wasn't great, but it had some, you know, just cheesy, fun, lighthearted, and it seemed like they had a fun time making it. And uh, to me, uh, this one just, I, I was really surprised that it did so well. And uh, it got, uh, you know, a sequel greenlit for it. Uh, and I don't know, i uh, really surprised. Uh, Steven Soderbergh also directed Che 1 and 2, Che Guerrera, um, which has a really nice Criterion Collection release. But uh, again, I think he's such a super talented director. Uh, he's done so many other movies that I haven't even, you know, talked about, but those are just some of the, my favorite ones off the top of my head. Uh, so really disappointed in this one. Um, I don't know what I was expecting, but I just, for all the buzz I heard about it and then, you know, getting greenlit for the sequel, I guess I was expecting more from it. Uh, and it just had, it tonally, it was so different from the sequel. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess uh, if, you know, you're into seeing, you know, shirtless guys and stuff, um, check it out. Um, that's not for me. Again, I sat through this for my girl because I've made her sit through a lot of movies, horror movies that she's not into and movies with hot chicks. So uh, a little bit of revenge for her, but even she didn't enjoy this one. But uh, there you go. Let me uh, let me know for sure what your favorite Steven Soderbergh movie is. Uh, the Girlfriend Experience 2, which uh, was Sasha Gray, um, that's one that I haven't seen, but I want to see. I heard uh, that that was actually surprisingly good, but I feel like a lot of times, you know, when he has like non-actor, well, she's not really an actress, but <laughs> uh, in that sense. But yeah, sometimes when they have that, it doesn't always work. Um, it's a rarity in my opinion, but... Um, there you go. Those are the 12 Blu-rays that I got at the Dollar Tree. Let me know if you've seen any of them and what you think of them. And let me know which one is your favorite. And again, Conjuring 2 and I Kill Giants are up for trade. And let me know what the best movie you found at the Dollar Tree has been. Now the Dollar 25 Tree. Uh, leave me all of those comments down below. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.